Welcome to Law Days and Lattes, the podcast where we blend the world of law and business with a warm cup of information and common sense. I'm your host, Sydney Whelan, attorney, real estate investor, and business owner. Each week, we'll be your go-to source for legal insights, business advice, and so much more. Whether you're a seasoned professional, an ambitious entrepreneur, or simply someone seeking guidance, we'll have you covered. From navigating the legal landscape to empowering you with valuable business strategies, we'll explore the legal side of life and enjoy a virtual latte along the way. So, grab your favorite latte, get comfortable, and let's dive into Lattes and Lattes. Welcome to Lattes and Lattes. This podcast is sponsored by the Whelan Law Firm of Moberly, Missouri, your go-to source for legal issues encountered by your family and your business. I'm your host, Sydney Whelan. Welcome to episode number 28 of Lattes and Lattes. Last week, we talked about the basics of buying property. Today, we're continuing that conversation. We're going to be talking about how to finance your next real estate transaction. Real estate financing is a vital part of the real estate industry, whether you're buying your first home or diving into property investments. Understanding how financing works, what loan options are available, and the terms that shape these decisions is essential for making informed and confident real estate choices. In this episode, we're exploring the fundamentals of real estate financing and unpacking the key considerations you should know. Let's dive in. Real estate financing is the process of acquiring funding for the purchase or development of property. At its core, it's an agreement between a borrower and a lender with the property often serving as collateral. The borrower gets the funds they need up front, and in return, they agree to pay back the loan with interest over time. Understanding the basic structure of financing helps you to see who the key players are. Lenders, borrowers, mortgage brokers, and underwriters, each contributing to the approval and flow of funds. When looking at real estate financing, it's crucial to recognize that there are different types of financing for various needs residential, commercial, and investment properties. Each category comes with its own set of loan products and considerations. For instance, government-backed loans like FHA or VA loans can be helpful for first-time buyers or veterans, while more complex options like hard money loans might be suited for investors looking to secure properties quickly. When navigating the mortgage landscape, borrowers, will encounter various loan types, each with its advantages and disadvantages. Fixed rate mortgages are one of the most common loan types, offering predictability with a set interest rate over the life of the loan, whether it's a 30-year or a 15-year mortgage. For those looking for lower initial payments or expecting income growth, adjustable rate mortgages, often called ARMs, might appeal although they come with the risk of increasing rates after the introductory period. Interest-only loans and jumbo loans are specialized products that can serve specific situations, such as high net worth individuals purchasing luxury properties. Understanding the benefits and risks associated with each loan type allows borrowers to select the mortgage that best aligns with their financial goals and long-term plans. For those diving into real estate investing, financing strategies differ significantly from traditional home buying. Investors have unique options, including conventional loans, portfolio loans, and hard money loans. Conventional loans offer competitive rates, but often have stricter credit and income requirements. On the other hand, Hard money loans provide quicker access to capital, but usually come with higher interest rates, making them ideal for short-term investments like fix and flip projects. 
Hard money lenders are a type of private money lender that underwrites their loans based on the hard asset itself rather than the borrower's qualifications like a credit score or income. For buy and hold investors who plan to generate rental income, financing strategies should focus on long-term stability. It's important to consider factors like property management cost, vacancy rates, and market appreciation when securing loans for rental properties. Conventional lenders are the most common type of lender. They offer conventional financing or government agency loans like FHA and VA. Private money lenders, partnerships, and even crowdfunding are creative ways for investors to access capital without the restrictions of traditional financing. A private money lender is considered any lender that provides loans from a private individual or company that comes from a private source for investment property loans. Their loans can be flexible, depending upon the lender, partially because private lenders are not limited by the underwriting requirements for conventional loans. What about crowdfunding? And what is it? Well, a short definition would be a method of raising money from a crowd of people. In return, the investors, otherwise known as backers, receive rewards or even equity in the project. Navigating real estate financing means being familiar with key financial terms and concepts. For example, the loan to value or LTV ratio compares the loan amount to the property's value, impacting the amount of down payment required. The debt to income, or DTI, ratio measures a borrower's ability to manage monthly payments and repay debts. Lenders often use this to assess the risk of extending a loan. Another important distinction is between pre-qualification and pre-approval. Pre-qualification provides a ballpark figure of what you may be able to borrow, while pre-approval is a more in-depth process where the lender verifies your financial information. Understanding these terms helps you to avoid surprises during the lending process and ensures you're fully prepared for your real estate purchase. When traditional loans aren't an option, or when buyers and investors seek more flexibility, Creative financing can offer alternative solutions. Seller financing, for example, allows the buyer to make payments directly to the seller rather than through a bank or a mortgage lender. Similarly, lease options and rent-to-own agreements give buyers the opportunity to live in the property while a portion of the rent goes toward their eventual purchase. As a practicing attorney, I sometimes witness problems with some rent-to-own, or contract-for-deed transactions. If this is something you're considering, please talk to an attorney familiar with the laws in your state for ways to protect your legal and financial interest. Real estate crowdfunding, as we mentioned before, is another venue that allows multiple investors to pool their resources to finance property purchases or developments, providing a lower-cost entry into the investment market. Additionally, bridge loans offer short-term financing to help buyers secure property while waiting for long-term financing to come through. These options provide buyers and investors with more flexibility but require careful consideration of the associated risk and cost. In today's market, several trends and challenges are shaping real estate financing. Rising interest rates have made borrowing more expensive, limiting options for both home buyers and investors. As property prices continue to rise in many areas, securing affordable financing becomes even more critical. Economic factors like inflation and taxes also play a role, affecting the purchasing power and property values. On the other hand, Innovation in financial technology has led to the rise of new loan products and online lending platforms, sometimes making it easier for some buyers and investors to access financing. These new platforms often streamline the process, offering faster approvals and more transparency, but they also bring new challenges, such as higher risk for unprepared borrowers. 
We had the chance to speak with lenders and real estate experts about some of the most pressing questions facing buyers and investors. One of the key takeaways from our conversations was the importance of preparing early, building a strong credit history, saving for down payments, and understanding your budget well before starting the property search. Our experts also highlighted the common mistakes many first-time buyers make, such as overextending themselves financially or not shopping around for the best loan terms. Those experts emphasized that working with an experienced lender and staying informed about market conditions can make a significant difference in securing favorable financing. So in conclusion, real estate financing can be complex, but it's an essential aspect of making informed and strategic decisions in the real estate market. Whether you're purchasing a home for the first time or expanding your investment portfolio, understanding your financing options and terms and market trends is the keys to success. If you found today's episode helpful, be sure to subscribe, follow, and leave a review and also share it with your friends and family. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll be discussing another important topic for your business and your family. And before you go, I again want to mention our new Lattes and Lattes podcast pages on Facebook and Instagram, where you can expect engaging content, valuable tips, and community interaction. Our goal is to create a space where we can learn from each other and grow together. So we want to hear from you. Share your thoughts, ask questions, and connect with fellow listeners. We will put all of the links into our show notes. And as always, my friends, grab a cup of coffee or your favorite latte, hold your loved ones tight, and have a great week. This podcast episode contains general information for discussion purposes only. Each case is different and must be judged on its own merits. Missouri rules generally prohibit lawyers from advertising that they specialize in particular areas of the law. This show should not be construed to suggest such specialization. Nothing on this show should be taken as legal advice for any individual case or situation. This information is not intended to create an attorney-client relationship, and the listening or viewing of this podcast does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. 